Hi, I'm Jeannie Ansalers. I'm, I'm going to be speaking to you today about Jean-Pierre Barral's approach to working with babies and children. That's the work that I do. Babies and children are especially cherished patients and they deserve the utmost gentleness and respect. One of the biggest things we can do, the most respectful thing that we can do for a baby or a child or for any of us is to be able to listen to their bodies, listen to their tissues. This very basically means being able to perceive with your hands what's going on in the body. Many patients um, are sent to me by therapists and doctors and parents and caregivers asking me to check them out because they know I can perceive what's going on underneath. Why is their baby crying inconsolably? Why do they have reflux and spitting up? Why are they constipated? And to do something about it, of course. What's going on when their neck is twisted like this in a torticollis? Um, why do they have head pain? Why do they have belly pain? So these are the kind of referrals that, that I'll get. In my background, I'm a, a physical therapist and I specialize in pediatrics. And I got the NDT, neurodevelopmental treatment um, training, many, many years ago. So I was very attuned to looking at movement, normal development, abnormal development, and being able to utilize my hands to help kids move. So it's very interesting to be able to, to, to uh, not only utilize those skills of being able to see and feel how a child is moving, but then to get underneath and feel what's going on underneath that. For instance, uh, we see a lot, of, a lot of children these days with torticollis, and that's basically when the neck is very tight on one side and the, head of the face is going towards the other side, often combined with a flattened skull on one side. And the, each child, each baby with torticollis is different because a lot of these babies are compressed in utero and they're all compressed in different ways. And so you can't just say you're going to be treating one thing like the sternocleidomastoid. You need to be listening to the tissues. Is it something in the nerves? Because a lot of these children have issues around, you know, a branch of the, a nerve root coming out of the neck and the brachial plexus or one hip that's involved? Is it something more in the hip? Is an organ involved? Is the lung a little compressed on one side? Is the pleura a little compressed? Listening to that, bod that baby will tell you and guide you to uh, what specifically is going on with that baby. So I see a lot of babies with torticollis. Of course, you know, doctors are referring children for neck pain or even, you know, accidents and such. Um, it's typical that I'll have uh, kids come in with belly problems and oftentimes it's something to do not only with their belly but where they're putting their emotional tensions in their bellies, perhaps when they're going to school or a difficult situation. Um, one of my most important pieces because of, of working with a child or a baby, one of the referrals that I always make room for in my practice is the baby that is crying inconsolably 24-7. And when a baby is crying like that, you must check them out. You must listen and find out what's going on because they must be in some kind of discomfort. And uh, I think about this little baby that I saw was two months old and all oh, the parents came in, they're both exhausted because the baby's not sleeping and crying. And when I did my listening and my treatment, where I went to was the small intestine and the innervation or the nerves that go to the small intestine. That's not going to be for every baby, but for this particular baby. Being able to help work with that, that the organ and its relationship to the head, the cranium, the vagus nerve coming down into that, that organ, help that baby after one session get out of pain, have better bowel movements, have better digestion, so that the baby could start to, um, you know, regulate a little bit more, be able to to uh, sleep, be able to have more sleep awake periods, and be able to eat better and digest better. So digestive issues are, are a big uh, area of referrals for me, as well as orthopedic areas. And of course, being a pediatric therapist, I see a lot of children with neuromotor problems, such as cerebral palsy or developmental delay. And you know, with a child with cerebral palsy, some, a lot of these children, especially with cerebral palsy, have chronic constipation. And we can really help these kids 
you know, start to have better regulation of their bowels and, and of their gut and their digestion, and also to help teach the parents and caregivers some things they can do to help these kids. Because when the gut isn't working well, the mind isn't working well.